imagine it's 1400 years ago. Okay. It's the night of Ashura. You see people leaving in their hundreds of thousands from the camp of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. You turn and look at Imam Hussain, you see the sadness and sorrow in his face. In that moment, you, Mohsen, decide to stay and be the 73rd companion of Imam Hussain Now the morning of Ashura comes, the Imam says to you, Mohsen, it's up to you to help me in any way you see fit yourself. Where would you volunteer your services? How would you aid the Imam on the day of Ashura? Um, first of all, I'll probably ask the Imam like, what he's doing or what do you want me to do? Um, and then go forth with that. It's not negotiable. Um, you know, what he, uh, you know, what sort of tasks he designates to myself. But if he left it up to me and said that, look, you can pick what you need to do or what you'd like to do, um, I really don't know. Like, there's so, there's so much available. Well, not so much available, there's so much to do. Weapons need preparing. Uh, women need taking care of. Children need distracting. Um, you know, search for food, search for water. Uh, God knows how many people are having a mental breakdown because they're about to go into war. It's not even war, it's like you're going to death. It's, death is certain, you're not winning that. It's just, it will be, I, I would assume there'll be a lot of chaos. But from the narrations and the history, we know that there was people actually like, you know, stood up to the challenge. These were warriors. These weren't people who were like scared. These weren't people who were hesitant or nervous. These people knew what needed to be done and went out to execute their task. Me, myself, if I was there, I'd, I'd I ain't got a clue what I'd be doing. I think I'd still be in, in a state of shock. I think I'd be, I wouldn't know where to help people sharpen swords, prepare weapons, saddle up horses, or would I be, you know, with the children trying to tell them everything's okay? Would I be helping bringing back bodies, you know, preparing graves? I honestly I got a clue. Suppose you finish work today. You drive back home. Your mom, your dad. They come to the door, they open the door, they let you in. But you see your family's in a frantic state. You see everyone's running around, gathering food, fruit, drinks, etc. So you ask your mom or dad, what's going on? Have we got guests today? And they turn around to you and they say, oh, a man's come to see you and he's waiting for you in the living room. So you go to the living room, you open the door and you see sitting there is Imam Hussain alayhi salam. What would you want to say to him in that moment? What would you have to say to him in that moment? Oh, I thought I could be speechless. I don't know what to say. Uh, an individual you've been hearing about your whole life and commemorating his life and his death and his, his sacrifice and his honour year after year after year uh, volunteering, participating in virtualists and things like that and then finally he's there to, to see me I don't know if I'll be conscious or not 
Um, honestly speaking, if I was to see Imam Hussein there, I'd, I'd probably take a minute or two just to look at him, just to um, take it all in. Who you know, this is the son of Ali ibn Abu Talib. This is you know the the master of martyrs. What would you want him to say to you? What would you be happy with hearing from his holy mouth? <laughs> Salaamu Alaikum. How are you? You alright? That, that would be more than enough. I don't, I don't even need anything else. Just the fact that he's, he, he's you know, come to see me, that he acknowledges who I am as an individual, um, that's more than enough for me. So now you've met with him, mm -hmm. sat with him, yeah. and it's time to say your farewell. He's leaving your house. What would you do in that situation? What would you would say him to him? <laughs> I wouldn't let him go. I would, I'd do my best to keep him as long as possible, but you know, we're you know, mature grown ups, we understand that you know, he's probably got other people to visit, he's got other people to see. And um, I'd, I would ask him, like, you know, what more can I do? Is there anything you need from me? You know, not just me, loads of us, Shabab and the community have been serving Imam Hussein in any way we can for a long time. It's nice to get feedback and see that, you know, are we, are we doing anything wrong or are we going the correct way or is there anything you personally want us to do because we're here to serve you so at the beginning I asked you imagine we were on the night of Ashura 1400 yeah. years ago came to the day of Ashura how would you serve knowing the events that took place it might be easy to say I would offer my services to Imam Hussein Salam in this manner, whether it be to gather water with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas salam, whether it's to bring back the body of Ali al-Akbar salam, whether it's to stand as a shield in front of the holy Imam while he offers his prayers, whether it's to stand and guard the tents of the women and children, for when the army comes to beat them, you say to the army, if you want to hit someone, hit me. Mm -hmm. What's the sin of the three-year-old girl? And it might be easy to say, oh, you know, I would have done this, I would have done that. But a lot of us forget that our 12th Imam is among us. So my final question is, what have you done for him? Some say at least Imam Hussein had 72 companions. Yes. How many has our current Imam got? Some say at least Imam Hussein was amongst family, friends, mm. loyal companions who gave their lives, their children's lives, their wives, their daughters, their everything for Imam Hussein. What have we done? What have we given to our 12th Imam? I mean, me personally, I've always remembered the Imam in my prayers. Um, always prayed for his protection, his safety for his health, for his wealth and fortune, and for his reappearance. For surely this kingdom, this world belongs to him. And he, rightfully so, should be placed as leader, king, khalif, whatever you want to call it. And me personally, I don't think I've done enough at all for my Imam. I wouldn't say I've done nothing, but Looking now, there's so much more I can do. Understand the Imam better, recognize the Imam better. Maybe there's things that he wants to see in me, things he wants to see me doing. Maybe performing Salat al more often. Maybe um, reading up on certain ayat that to do directly with him. Maybe passing on his message and 
passing on his existence and his acknowledgement to those a little younger who don't truly understand his existence, why he exists. Um, there's a lot more that I can do and as a community there's a lot more we can do. People don't really understand that when the Hebrews were praying for Moses uh, in the time of the Pharaoh because they were collectively together and so strong Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them Moses 150 years earlier than he actually planned to than it was expected simply because the community was so joined and the community were just one and prepared and ready for the arrival of Moses if you look at our people are we united on that front that we are ready and prepared for the arrival of the Imam and to do what's necessary to eradicate evil from this world so as a community have we actually taken the steps forward to prepare for his arrival as a community as a nation not as individuals and now there's 50 odd days remaining to this year's Ashura what do you think will be different this year as opposed to the other years in terms of you and your service this year I mean Alhamdulillah I've been blessed with the opportunity to serve Imam Hussain um, and every year I try to get involved small youth lectures or I can do some volunteering or uh, donate money or whatever I can do and inshallah this year it will be different for me because I will be hopefully uh, taking on a new sort of platform or method to lecture which I have not seen done before in a Muharram period not that I know so inshallah it's uh, something I'm working on if um, with the correct time and preparation inshallah I'll be able to pull it off as they say and I think it will be a unique experience for individuals to learn uh, not the traditional the conventional way of someone sitting on the member and speaking but more interactive inshallah that will that can materialize this year um, as a community I think there's always room for improvement there's always more we can do normally each Muharram is different because different issues are addressed um, and people always try to do something new for example sometimes people start to perform in uh, plays and have some sort of theatrics uh, incorporated with the, the majlis to enhance the emotion um, some people maybe would write new scripts or maybe look at new um, events that occurred in Karbala which we haven't covered before and maybe uh, in, I mean, this Muharram we'll be able to get really uh, experienced and effective speakers to actually um, pass on a good message to our community inshallah Ayna baqiyat sallah Ayna baqiyat sallah Ayna baqiyat sallah Ala kiraz khudai Khuda kulad ke biyai Khuda سنور غیر نوائیم خدا کند که بیاییم خدا کند